Hello everyone, this is Dr. Noah Erickson from Innovative Family Wellness. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining me. I'm going to talk today about genetic testing for autism. You know, I really like to have a lot of fun when I'm here with parents in the room and so many folks come in and they say, I bought a 23andMe test, I saw it online, I bought it at the local, you know, Target or something, and you have no idea how to interpret this, right? Or maybe you bought one and you're looking at it and you're thinking about your ancestors or your genes. Well, a lot of people think about the MTHFR gene. And my topic today is to highlight that, as well as another gene called DHFR, and talk about metabolism of folate, right? Mamas, you know this all too well. If you're expecting, you're hoping to become pregnant, you're taking lots of folate. We've known that for years, right? That's why they've put into different foods and things like that. They've supplemented breads and products to have adequate folate. Well, actually that's folic acid, and we'll talk about that shortly, to prevent things like neural tube defects and cleft palate and midline spinal defects. So, the importance of folate though, on the spectrum with special kiddos that I like to treat, there's three areas I gotta talk about. Number one is speech, okay? I'll get into a couple other good ones like sleep and behaviors, but this is, if there's one question I've been asked about over the years more and more, it's how do I get my kiddos to help with language and speech, all right? Well, technically, speech is the articulation here and language comes from up in here, but we'll talk about the importance of folate. So we all know that maybe you're taking vitamin B12 and you're looking at your genes and you're trying to figure this thing out to get appropriate speech. Well, did you know that in this cycle of methylation, it is extremely important to have the right type of folate? So we look at the gene testing to find out what type of folate works for your brain. There's different types. There's folinic, which we often use when they have cerebral folate antibodies. There's folic acid and there's folate. So folic is the synthetic form that we don't like. It's supposed to be broken down in the intestine by a special enzyme, but unfortunately that free folic acid can actually work like a stimulant. So I tell people it's like if you ate a pack of Skittles, you're all revved up, that can actually do more harm and that enzyme's slow to break that down. So we don't want that folic acid. So we take our genetics and we look at things like 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, mouthful, right? And we try to use that. But do you know that sometimes you drink cow's milk? Big tip, everybody, right? You're drinking cow's milk, I know, for your protein and for your calcium, your nutrients. That can actually cause this antibiotic reaction because of what's in the milk. So I tell people, as you know, for multiple reasons, like the opioid response or the gut problems with it, and the high histamine content of it, and the casein causing the morphoid or the brain altering compounds that are from milk and other foods like wheat, don't do that, number one. So we have to look at this condition and find out relevant to getting the methylation cycle work, what type of folate, but remember there's traps along the way called folate traps if we're not methylating, so keep checking out those genetics. And if you need help interpreting those 23s and me's and tests, be glad to help you out. All right, so beyond speech, the second issue that a lot of parents ask me about is something called sleep. And they all say, I've tried melatonin, I'm taking magnesium Epsom salt baths, I'm diffusing my essential oils like lavender and chamomile, which are great ideas. You're shutting down the Wi-Fi early, you're keeping down the blue light, you're making the kids go to bed in a cooler room, you're keeping the environment conducive, you're having a consistent bedtime, all those are awesome. You're being careful not to have too much sugar at bedtime. And thumbs up, guys. I commend you for doing that. However, do you know that at this intersection of getting serotonin to convert to melatonin, it's all about that gene pathway right there using things like MTHFR and also getting something called BH4, tetrabiopterin, to convert. And that's critically involved in this pathway. So if we're not methylating, we don't take good old happy feel good serotonin and switch into melatonin for a good night's sleep. And on top of that, there's a big thing that it's going to relate directly into my next topic here, which number three is mood and behaviors. So over the years, if there's ever been one thing that's come up, it's about how do I help with mood and behaviors? My kids are angry or irritable or they're head banging, they have self injurious behavior or they don't get along in school classrooms with other well. I've heard a lot of that kind of thing. So I can tell you the other 
hormone or neurotransmitter that kind of shares this pathway with serotonin is called dopamine. And if we don't have the right folate and this whole methylation cycle is not working, we don't properly balance dopamine. So the kids can burst in this whole adrenaline mode. Now certainly that uses some different other gene SNPs, so take out your 23s and me or your other tests like maximize genetics and peer through them and find the comp genes. That dopamine should slowly break down into neuroadrenaline and then adrenaline and there's some other enzymes like MAOB and MAOA, of course that works on serotonin, that also help this slow and steady. But what happens is if the kids are eating tons of sugars and tons of carbs, it spikes the sugar, that spikes the adrenaline, that pushes insulin ultimately to get the blood sugar packed away for another rainy day when you need it. And unfortunately, the kids can have some really crazy temper tantrums and mood swings and they don't sleep well. So this all kind of intertwines back to this whole folate pathway. So you guys know this to adults out there. You're looking at cardiovascular disease and how to control this you're always interested in folate. I started off the topic today by saying about pregnancy, but I can tell you again, these three areas using folate metabolism and properly understanding it with genetic testing, you can understand how the body works again in the following areas. Speech, again, that's probably my number one thing that parents call in for. Number two would be sleep, and number three, moon behaviors. So if you found this helpful, if this gets you thinking about folate versus folinic acid versus formal folate and the synthetic forms and your B vitamins, take a look because a lot of the B vitamins that we now have are very selective. We do or we don't use B12. We do or we don't use folate and how this whole cycle works. So there's specialized tests that we do, specialized blood tests and urine tests and some saliva tests to look at the aspects of this whole thing called methylation to find out what type is right for you. And keep in mind, as I said too, you could have a folate receptor antibody, which really changes that equation. And in that case, we have to do a lot of other special work to get around that dietary changes, specific doses of very specific supplements to allow that pathway to work better too. So I hope this has been helpful. Hit that share button if you know somebody out there who could benefit from this. Hit the like button, please. Pay it forward to somebody. And if you have any questions, we're there for you guys. Check us out on our website. It's InnovativeFamilyWellness.com. That's InnovativeFamilyWellness.com. And pay this forward to someone, please, if, they think, if you think it could be of help to them. So for Innovative Family Wellness, this is Dr. Noah wishing everybody a great day. Thanks again. Tune in again next time. Take care.